Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Miss Summer and I'm your host. This is your teacher, Miss Miriam. Today we'll learn more about the Vikings and how they recorded stories and created swords. I'm Miss Miriam and today's lesson is titled Sagas and Swords. Today we will learn what sagas are and why they were important to the Vikings. We will also join Bjorn and his father as they create Bjorn a sword. Before we begin, let's look back at our chart from yesterday and quickly review what we have learned. Good idea. Miss Summer, can you share what you already know about the Vikings? Yes. We learned that in autumn, older cattle were killed to provide food for wintertime and that Viking families come together daily for breakfast and dinner. Thank you, Miss Summer. I am learning so much about the Vikings. Hmm, are there some new things you want to learn during today's reading? Yes, there are actually a few things I want to learn. You said that we'll be learning how to make swords and that Bjorn will be getting a sword. I want to know why Bjorn is getting a sword. I also want to know how Bjorn's father will make his sword. What will he use? Oh, those are some great questions, Miss Summer. You know, I would love to learn those answers too. But before we get started with our reading, let's begin by first discussing the meaning of some very important vocabulary words that we will reference in the lesson today. Are you ready, Miss Summer? Yes, I love learning new words. Great. Boys and girls, are you ready? Awesome. Let's get started. So our first word is flexibility. Say flexibility. Flexibility. Flexibility is bending <laughs> without breaking. Okay, let's do a gesture to help us remember what flexibility means. Let's bend back and forward to show that we have flexibility. The flexibility of the tree allows it to bend in the wind without breaking. I think I would break if the wind blew me that hard. I do not have that much flexibility. Yes, I agree. I think I might break too. All right, let's move on to our next word, boys and girls. So our next word is foe. Say foe. Foe. Foe is an enemy or a rival. The Vikings had many enemies and rivals and they would actually have sword fights. Ooh. Hey, I've just had a great idea. Oh no. Let's have a sword fight. Oh, we have the swords I don't know here. about this. It sounds dangerous. Oh, come on. Look at them. They're just Oh my gracious. They're just fake swords. They're just pretending and we're just having fun. Boys and girls will enjoy this. Okay. Are you ready? I think so. Anga. Ooh. Oh, that's <laughs> enough. That's enough, Miss Miriam. <laughs> Ooh, that was so much fun, boys and girls, wasn't it? I guess so. Oh, you know you enjoyed it. All right, boys and girls, so we can pretend to have a sword fight when we hear the word foe because the Viking warriors fought their foes with swords. Great job, boys and girls. Let's look at our next word. Our next word is intently. Say intently. Intently. Intently is to do or look at something closely and carefully. The Viking warrior looked intently for land. Intently, let's do a gesture for that. To look intently, intently. The Viking warriors looked intently for land. Great job, boys and girls. So let's go on to our next vocabulary word. All right, our next word is sagas. Say sagas. Sagas. Sagas may be a word you haven't heard of before, boys and girls, but I bet you may have read or saw some of them before. Sagas are long stories that tell of historic and legendary events. Okay, let's do a gesture for that. Let's pretend that we're holding a book and we're flipping through the pages because it's so long. Remember, sagas have historical events but also have legends and made up events as well. Wow. An example of that would be Star Wars. Do you know any other examples? I think I know some examples of other sagas that have been made into movies. Oh really? Let's hear yes. about those. So Star Wars you talked about. The Chronicles of Narnia. Oh and Harry Potter. I like Harry Potter. Yes, that's correct Miss Summer. 
all of those are examples of long stories that have both historic and legendary events, boys and girls, and I bet you've seen some of those movies too. Let's look at our last word for today. Our last word is weld. Say weld. Weld. Weld is to make two pieces of metal into one by heating them to high temperatures. Okay, so let's do a hand motion to show us how to remember the word weld. Let's take our hands, put it together like this, and our fingers so we can show that we have welded together two pieces. We will learn how Bjorn and his father welded together pieces to make a sword like this one, boys and girls, oh. or like the ones that we have. Ooh. Well, I am excited to learn how Bjorn and his father create a sword. Well, let's not stall anymore. Let's get started and find out right. what happens. So we're going to listen carefully to hear more about the Viking community and why Bjorn will be receiving a sword made by his father. Prepare to be nice and toasty because we will be visiting a big fire right in the middle of town, boys and girls. Wow. So get ready and read along with us and look at the pictures as we read. As soon as breakfast was over, Tolly set off to his uncle's farm. After my grandmother and Kitta had cleared and washed the bowls and cups, they went to the back room with my mother and aunt. There they were busily sewing several new tunics. Kitta had told me that one was for me and one was for Tolly. They were going away presents. Meanwhile, my grandfather and brothers prepared to go hunting and fishing, and I went to the forge with my father and uncle. As usual, I began my working day in the forge by adding wood to the fire, and then used the bellows to fuel the flames. Today was no ordinary day. After today, I would own my very own sword. It was not usual for a boy like me to own a sword. Although my father was a carl, able to own land or a business, artified in trade, he was not a jarl, a member of elite nobility. Swords such as the one my father was about to make for me were usually reserved for the jarls. I had seen such swords carried by nobles as they arrived in our town to participate in the thing our local assembly. The thing was held outdoors once a year and was a time for Carls, such as my father and uncles, to sit together with the Jarls to discuss issues, settle disputes, judge crimes, and make decisions about our community. Even though the Carls were a larger group, the Jarls had greater authority. It was at one of these assemblies that it had been decided that 25 young men from our town should leave and go to Iceland. It was at the same meeting that Lord Toki had announced that my father had saved not only his life, but the king's life. My father had uncovered a plot that people were planning to kill both Lord Toki and the king. He had overheard two spies talking in his workshop. My father had prevented this terrible crime from happening. To thank my father, Lord Toki wanted to give me a nobleman's sword. Question time. You heard that today was not an ordinary day for Bjorn. What made today special for him? That's right, boys and girls. Miss Summer, do you know the answer? The boys and girls gave you a hint. I heard their hint. Yes, Bjorn would receive his own sword today, so it was definitely not an ordinary day. That's right. Great job, boys and girl girls, and you too, Miss Summer. Thanks. So let's keep reading to find out what happens next. Once the fire in the forge was burning fiercely, my father was ready to begin. He had explained to me many times that maintaining a strong fire in which wood is burned and extreme temperatures was the secret to being a good blacksmith. He told me that the iron is only as good as the flames that shape it. Bjorn, I want you to pay close attention to everything I do. You need to understand that making a strong sword is very difficult. It requires skill, my father explained. And so he began. 
I watched carefully as my father bundled together bars of iron. As I watched, the heat from the flames warmed my skin, turning it pink. And before long, I was dripping with sweat. I watched my father as he worked carefully and intently. As the iron bars softened and connected, my father used a variety of tools to draw out the metal into the length of a sword. He worked to weld the pieces of metal together. As he pulled and stretched the material, he twisted it slowly. The shape of a sword began to appear. Do you see what has happened, Bjorn? He asked, though I could tell that he didn't really expect an answer. The heating and twisting of the different kinds of metal has created a composite of iron and now has the necessary strength and flexibility for a sword. Yes, I see, I responded. Question time. Was it common for a boy to own a sword? What do you think, girls and boys? Very good. Mm -hmm. Do you know, Miss Summer? The boys and girls already have the answer. They gave me the answer. Yes. Thank goodness. No, it was not common for a boy to receive a sword. That's correct. Now, great job, boys and girls, but let's think about this. Why was it not common? Why didn't he have a sword? What was so unusual about this? What do you think, boys and girls? Share that with Miss Summer so she can answer. I heard them. They said that Bjorn's father is a Carl, and only the elite Jarls own swords. Right. Yes. Great listening, boys and girls. And good job, Miss Summer, listening to those boys and girls. They know all the answers. They know all the answers. Oh, they are such great listeners. All right, let's see what happens next, boys and girls. My father placed the softened metal upon the anvil and continued to twist, hammer, chisel, and file it into shape. As soon as he was satisfied with its shape, I knew he would plunge the hot metal into a tub of cold water to cool and harden it. Once the iron had cooled, he would begin to sharpen the blade. Although I did not yet know how to make a sword, I did know how to make spear points, axes, and nails, as well as knives, pots, and pans. That much I had already learned from my father. Father, I have thought of a name for my sword, I said as I continued to watch him work. I want to name it Foe Biter. My father looked up from his work. That is a fitting name for a warrior's sword, he said seriously. This sword will serve you well. You can think of me and our family when you are called to use it. Question time. What did Bjorn name his sword? Oh, yes, boys and girls, you've already screamed out that answer. All right, do you know, Miss Summer? The boys and girls have already said it. Yes, they said foe biter, and I agree with them. Yes, that's correct, boys and girls. Great job, Miss Summer. Thanks. All right, so he named the sword foe biter. Hmm, why do you think he gave that name to his sword? Let's think about that one. Boys and girls, why would he call it foe biter? Hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. share what they're saying, Miss Summer. So the boys and girls think it's because the sword will be used against their foes or their enemies while they're in combat. And that makes perfect sense. Great job, and I love how you use that vocabulary word, boys and girls. Great job, Miss Summer, too. Let's continue reading, boys and girls, and see what's going to happen next. I stared at the sword for several moments and did not look up. I could feel the sweat and tears merge into one steady flow of water droplets that fell from my face into the earthen floor. At that moment, as my father spoke to me, I wanted to stop time, stop it completely, so that I could stay with him forever. For the rest of the day, my father, my uncle, and I worked together in the workshop, melting, shaping, and cooling iron. From time to time, people stopped by to collect something my father or my uncle had made for them. They were paid in either silver pieces or other goods that my family could use. 
as the day wore on, my father and uncle began to talk about the evening of storytelling that was scheduled to take place in the main marketplace. This was a common practice before special events such as weddings, festivals, or voyages. Poems of old were told by scalds so that we would know our history. It was considered important that these sagas be handed down through the generations and never forgotten. Our town had two scalds who had committed to memory dozens of sagas of Viking history and adventurers. One of the skulls would be traveling on the cargo ship with Tolly and me. He was charged with the responsibility of keeping the sagas alive in our new home. There was also a boy who lived on the same street as Tolly and I, who had been an apprentice to this skull. He had already spent many months with him, learning these poetic tales. He too would keep our history alive. And so late in the afternoon, after eating a dinner of fish, vegetables, and barley bread, instead of preparing to go to sleep for the night, my family, along with many others, made its way to the marketplace at the center of the town. A large fire had been lit, and many people were already seated around it. The two scalds sat upon a wooden platform beside the fire. Once everyone arrived and was settled, the first skull stood up and began to recite a saga of bravery and adventure. I looked into the eager faces of my family and friends, their eyes lit by the flickering flames of the fire, and knew in my heart that this would be the last time that we would all sit together to listen to these ancient tales. All right, boys and girls, let's get ready for some more questions. I hope you enjoyed our story today and learning about how Bjorn received a sword. <coughs> now, let's see if we can remember some of the answers to these questions and some of these key details from our story, because it's question time. My first question is, why do you think Bjorn starts to cry when he is helping to make his sword? Boys and girls, do you know? Hmm, I think that's a good idea. Miss Summer, mm -hmm. can you tell what, what you think about this? Why do you think he was crying? So, I think I know. Bjorn is unsure that he's ready to grow up. The boys and girls said he might even feel afraid. Yes, boys and girls, good thoughts. I think you're all, all right. Sometimes it can be scary to grow up, especially when Bjorn will be leaving his family and his home. All right, let's look at our next question. What is the name of the Norse people's local assembly? Do you remember, boys and girls? You got it. All right, Miss Summer, what did they say? They said the thing. I'm glad because I forgot for just a minute. That one's kind of hard to remember. We're yeah. used to calling it other things. All right, the thing is the correct answer. We might call it a town meeting or a gathering, but the Vikings called it the thing. Great job, boys and girls. Let's see if you can get this next one. Why was the thing important to the Norris? What do you think? I Miss mean, Summer, can you help us out? I can help you with this one. So it was a time that Carls, the common people, and Jarls, the elite, would meet to discuss issues. They would settle disputes, they would judge crimes, and even make decisions about the community. Wow, that is correct. Great job. I know she acted like she knew that, but I know you helped her, boys and girls. All right, so we see that the thing was a very important meeting because all these things were discussed during that time. Great job, boys and girls. Let's see about our next one. Bjorn's family joined others to listen to the skulls. Why were the skulls important to the Vikings? Do you remember who the skulls were? Why do you think they were so important, boys and girls? Share that with Miss Summer. Miss Summer, tell us what the boys and girls are saying. Yes, so they said the skalds were poets who reminded the Vikings of their history through oral retelling of sagas. Yes, that's correct. They were the storytellers. Whew, they must have had really good memories to yes. memorize all those stories and be able to tell them again. Great job, boys and girls. You must have a memory like that too, knowing right. all these answers. 
All right, let's look at our next question. What announcement about Bjorn's father was made at the thing? Oh, I know, I know. Sorry. <laughs> All right, Miss Summer. Let's let you answer it since you're so excited. Okay. Boys and girls, give her a chance to get this one. Okay, I want to go first this time. So Lord Togi announced that Bjorn's father had uncovered the plot of two spies to kill the king and Lord Togi. He was able to stop the crime from happening. Very good, Miss Summer. Thank she you. She was listening too. All right, so Bjorn's father saved Lord Togi's life. Let's see what reward was given to him for that. What was Bjorn's father's reward for doing this great thing? Do you remember, boys and girls? What was the reward? Absolutely. Miss Summer, what do you think? I think it's that Lord Toki requested that Bjorn be given the sword of a Jarl or a nobleman. That's exactly what the boys and girls said before I could even get it I out. I know. They are quick and they are absolutely right. Remember, Bjorn and his father were Karls are common people, so they didn't receive swords. But now Bjorn will be a Yar or nobleman. He'll get to make important decisions now. All right, great job answering those questions, boys and girls. Now let's do a little word work with our word sagas. All right, in the read aloud, you heard it was considered important that these sagas be handed down through the generations and never forgotten. Say the word sagas with me. Sagas. sagas. Great job, boys and girls. Sagas are long stories that tell of historic and legendary events. The Norsemen listened intently as Eric the Red told his saga of exploring Greenland. Boys and girls, have you ever heard of a saga before? Who told it? What was the saga about? Hey, Miss Summer, have you ever heard of a saga before? Yes, so I've read a saga before. The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Oh, yeah. Lewis, it's a story about four children who hid in a wardrobe and found themselves in a magical world called Narnia. In this world, there are talking animals and lots of strange and magical things happen. Oh, you know what? I have read that saga too, Miss Summer, and I bet the boys and girls have actually seen the movie of it. Oh, I do wish I could travel to a magical world through a wardrobe. That would be so much that fun. That would be fun. All right, boys and girls, now we're going to play an, a game with our word sagas, now that we know a little bit more about it. So I'm going to say a sentence that includes something that may or may not be a saga. If the example is a saga, say saga and give me a thumbs up. If the example is not a saga, say this is not an example of a saga and give me a thumbs down. All right, are we ready, boys and girls? Yes. All right, let's go. The Three Little Pigs, is that a saga or not a saga? What do you think? Ah, oh, Miss Summer, what are the boys and girls saying? They're saying that it's not a saga. That's right. Boys and girls, The Three Little Pigs is a short story. Remember, we learned that a saga is a long story. Great job listening and helping Miss Summer out. Right. All right, the Star Wars series would that be an example of a saga or not a saga? Oh, they were super fast to answer oh, that. They yes. said it was a saga. Great job, boys and girls. They were right on track with that one. All right, let's look at one more. Little Red Riding Hood, a saga or not a saga? What do you think? Ah, uh, yep, not a saga. Great job, boys and girls. Awesome job with our word work. All right, boys and girls, we've learned so much today in this lesson and had a lot of fun with our sword fight, right, Miss mm -hmm. Summer? Yes. All right, so let's pull up our chart and add to our chart what we've actually learned today. Miss Summer, can you share what we've learned today? I can. So Bjorn received a sword because his father saved the Lord Toki's life. Also, we learned that Bjorn's father welded different metals together to create the sword. Oh, those are great. Thank you for sharing, and I know the boys and girls learned a lot, too. I mean, y'all have worked so hard today learning about sagas and swords. You did such a great job with the vocabulary words, listening to the story, and answering all the questions correctly. I am so proud of you, and you should be proud of yourselves, too, boys and girls. Yes, and all rights and credits for today's lesson come from Core Knowledge Language Arts. We would like to thank Core Knowledge for publicly sharing these materials. Boys and girls, 
Thanks for joining us today. I cannot wait to keep learning more about the Vikings with you tomorrow. See you then. Bye.